Hello and welcome to the seventh video in my Ableton Live basic series. In this video I'm going to cover the transport bar which is this part up here. It has all sorts of buttons but since this is a basic series I'm only going to cover the more commonly used functions. Before we begin just a quick reminder to leave a like down below and hit that subscribe button. This will help me continue to bring valuable content to awesome viewers like you. So we're just going to start up here and we're going to work our way from left to right. The first thing we're going to talk about is BPM, which stands for beats per minute. The BPM of song can vary greatly between genres or styles of music. Basically the BPM that you select is going to be heavily dependent on the genre you choose to create. So for example, if I was to create a dubstep song, I would choose somewhere around 145 beats per minute, which sounds like this. But if I was going to make something like a house track, I would probably choose something around 128 beats per minute, which sounds like this. Now again, BPM can vary greatly between genres, so just do your research and choose a BPM that works well for the song you are trying to create. The next button I want to cover is this metronome. The metronome is super helpful if you are trying to record some vocals maybe and you just need something to help you stay on time. Or maybe perhaps you're recording a live instrument and you just need something to help you get a little closer to being in time with your tune. It's pretty straightforward to disarm it or rearm it. You just click it and whenever it's highlighted, it will be on. Whenever it's not highlighted, it will be off. There is actually a way to change the sound of the metronome, but I'm not going to cover that in this video. The next buttons I will cover is the play, stop, and record buttons. The play button, of course, just plays the song at the last point that you clicked. So if we click right here, we press stop and play again, it'll play from that point. But note, if you press the stop button twice in a row, it will actually go very back to the first bar and start from there. So we press it once and then we press play again. It'll play from the point that we last clicked. But if we press stop twice, then it will go back to that first bar. Also note that you can use the space bar to press play or pause, which is really handy. The next button is the record button, which of course allows you to record different things based on the type of track you're using. If you are using a MIDI track, then of course it will record any MIDI that you play while recording. And if you hit record with an audio track armed, then it will record the incoming audio that you have selected. Now keep in mind, if you're trying to record something, then you have to make sure that the track that you want to record is armed. So if you want to record some MIDI, make sure that you press this button, which is the MIDI arm button, and then we can record MIDI. Or if you are trying to record audio, just make sure that you have selected the correct input channel for your microphone or instrument and then hit arm recording and then you can record whatever you have coming in. Record whatever you have coming in. Now the next thing I want to talk about is the loop button which is right here. Now there's two ways you can adjust what you're looping. You can either move this bar around to loop the section you want or you can click and drag, right click, and then click loop selection and it will make sure that that part is highlighted for looping. So basically if you are trying to focus in on section and work on it and you don't want any other part to play you can use this looping function and it will just continue to play it over and over. And whenever you are done working on that part, you can just disarm the loop button. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is these punch in and punch out switches or buttons. What these do is basically if you're trying to create a recording, but you don't want to record in any other spot except for, let's say, this specific section. 
let's just drag our loop bar in right here since that's where we want the recording to be. And when you activate the punch in and punch out, it will only create the recording at this section within this bar. So let's go ahead and test that out right now. Test one, two, check. Test one, two, check. Test one, two, check. As you can see, it punched in right where we wanted it to and punched out exactly where we wanted it to. So that way, now we only have a recorded part within the border we selected. On that same note, if you do want to use the punch in and punch out, you can also adjust that bar using this. You can select the start point and you can also select how many bars you want that to go for. The next button on our list is the computer MIDI keyboard button, which essentially turns your computer's keyboard into a functional MIDI controller. Now to play any MIDI instrument live, you have to arm it. And then after we have this button turned on, which it already is, it will turn our keyboard into an effective MIDI controller. See if we turn it off, it doesn't work. You will probably find yourself toggling between this often, and you can also use the M key to turn this off and on, because there are different hotkeys that you can use whenever it's deactivated, but you can't use them whenever it's activated. The next button on our list is key mapping, which what this is, it allows you to map your computer's keyboard to different functionalities. So let's say I wanted to activate this track using the Y key. I would click on the button that I want to map, and then press the key that I want it mapped to, and then I would exit out of the mapping mode. And then whenever I press Y, the button on my keyboard now acts as a controller for that mapping. Now if you want to delete something that you mapped, then you simply click back on the mapping mode, you right click and select delete map. The next button, of course, is the MIDI mapping mode, which this is for use if you have a MIDI controller. We just click, and then we click on the function that we want to map to, click a button on our MIDI controller, and it is now mapped. The last thing I want to talk about is this bar up here where you see a fluctuating percentage. This percentage is the amount of work that your CPU is doing to run Ableton Live. Now, if you ever see this reaching extremely high levels like 70 or 80 or even 100%, then you may want to consider freezing some of your tracks to free up some of those resources, or perhaps change the buffer rate on your audio interface. Alrighty guys, that about sums it up for this video. I hope you learned something, and I hope you can make it back for the next one. Until then, take care and have an amazing day.